Good morning and welcome to Onward in Love and Caregiving. I'm Greg Johnson. I'm the president and CEO of GJP International, which is Greg Johnson Partnerships International. And here in New York, I have the great privilege of serving as the chief advisor to the CEO of Emblem Health for Family Caregiving. As always, it's a joy to welcome you to this program, a program that has been devoted now for three years to family caregiving, faith, and spirituality. A journey together truly from the head to the heart, which is probably one of the most difficult journeys of all, but it's one to which we are all invited. As we come to understand, we just might not be human beings trying to have a spiritual experience. Perhaps, as Teilhard Shadan said, we are spiritual beings locked in time and space, having a human experience. And as we come to understand more from the head down to the heart, we begin to shift into the divine nature that was placed into each and every one of us. We've often talked about the divine DNA, faith, hope, and love. And during July and August, it's been my goal to select a topic each week that's united around the theme of hope, because never have we needed that more. And I want to invite you, the last week I shared with you several books that I have read that I feel are extremely helpful in all, for all of us in making that journey, in dealing with our caregiving situation, even if you only get to read a page or two. It's part of the journey for you. And one of the books that I am rereading right now, I purchased it earlier, actually last Christmas time, because I bought many of them and gave them as uh, Christmas gifts. But this is Jane Goodall with Douglas Abram, The Book of Hope. And I hope, I hope that you will avail yourself of this and perhaps join me as we read and understand Jane Goodall's really incredible perspective on the topic of hope. Hope in these trying times. The book, as always, in things that are done with Doug Abram, because he is brilliant at codifying, he's brilliant at interviewing, he's brilliant at sharing. He's just a brilliant man whom I very much love, respect, and adore. But I love how he has divided the main portion of this book into Jane's Four Reasons for Hope. And I might suggest that just take a section of them. There's an introduction where he talks about what is hope. I'd invite you to spend some time with each of the essays. But what are Jane Goodall's four reasons for hope? Number one, the amazing human intellect, something that we only use a portion of. Secondly, the resilience of nature. The third, the power of young people. And four, the indomitable human spirit. So I urge you, The Book of Hope by Jane Goodall with Douglas Abrams, a wonderful reading and a wonderful guide as you in your own life journey into hope. Now, we have been talking about, and I think many of you have commented on it, and I, I appreciate your comments. When I wrote this book, Peace Be Still, I did it right after or within the six months of the death of my late husband, Joe Polacek. I wanted to do something to remember that experience. It also helped me in my grieving journey. 
But I realized that it was meditation and prayer that truly got me through the last months of his very serious illness. I would each morning get up before he did, or if he was awake, I'd say, I'll be right back, Joe. And he knew that I began my day with prayer and I would go and have prayer time. And then at night I would put him to sleep again and say again to him, I'll be in in just a short little bit, but I need just a little time of quiet prayer. And again, I would go and use it as a prayer time. And I used books that I love. I used prayers that I love. I used prayers from many different traditions. I used them from other people. I used things that people had sent to me. And I also, and this is something I can't say enough about. It was something that I learned from the very brilliant Dr. Arthur Caliandro, the late senior minister of the Marble Collegiate Church. And Arthur had said to me when I had my strokes, I'll never forget this. He came to visit me in the hospital. And he said, Greg, are you spending time receiving all the prayers that are being sent to you? And I thought, well, really, I hadn't thought of it that way. And I began that very night. And it's something I have continued because I know that people pray for me just as I pray for others. But I need to have the quiet and the stillness and just let those prayers come in. Recently, I've been going through a challenge, as many of you know, I'm preparing in October, it will have been a year since my heart surgery, to have a hip replaced. So my mobility issues are limited. Sounds like Queen Elizabeth, doesn't it? My mobility issues are limited. And that can get stressful. It can become depressing because I like to go, go, go. Well, I don't go, go, go. But I know that people are praying for me. And there's been an issue that I've been concerned about. And it was within the last few days after I had done a memorial service this past weekend, in which I talked about spending time receiving the prayers. And I suddenly realized that a specific group of people who I thought were being difficult by not particularly responding to me or answering questions I was asking, I realized it was a gift. They were giving me time to heal. Time to function at a much slower pace. And the moment I began to receive that goodness, that love, and those prayers, the entire issue turned around. So it's very important for us to have times of prayer, I believe. And it was that in mind that I wrote this book, a book that does not come from a particular theological format. It is not a a group of prayers of a particular faith tradition. It is a book of prayers that can be used by people of great faith and by people who are grappling with faith. And that was very purposefully done because we are all children of the divine. We're all brothers and sisters, and we're all at different stages in coming to understand both our humanity and our divinity, that faith, hope, and love that was placed into us by God, the divine, the universe, when we were born. And so we like to look at those prayers to help us. So it was very interesting when I went back to the book, planning to use it in July and August, I thought, well, I'll begin with a prayer of hope. Well. There's no prayer of hope in the entire book. But the entire book is about hope. And that struck me so strongly. So we have looked at the prayer of faith, the prayer of forgiveness, the prayer of acceptance, 
And today we're going to look at, at the root of so many issues in our lives that tamp down the hope, and that is fear. Remember, face everything and recover, or forget everything and run. We've both, we've used both in our lives. But together, let's commit to face everything and rise. To face everything and recover. Let us pray together. Fear at the root of so many of our other emotions overwhelms and confounds. Is fear forget everything and run? Or is it face everything and rise? The choice is mine and yours. Help me, O oh Father, mother of us all, to choose the latter. Help me to understand when I am afraid, troubled by circumstances that are beyond me. Help me to understand powerlessness. Then aware of my emotional state, let me accept it without judgment. I am human and fear is part of life. And at this moment, I am afraid. Let me accept this understanding that in awareness, and acceptance, I can move on to positive, bold, and love-filled action. I cast out the fear in the name and power of the God of my present understanding or confusion. And so it is. Thank you for strength. For the peace that is now washing over me with abundance and assurance. And I go on. I face everything and rise. I celebrate a life of co partnership and co creation, a life walking with my source of all peace, comfort, strength, joy, and hope. Forever and ever, world without end. Amen. Marian Gambardella, Reverend Marian Gambardella, wrote the affirmations in this book, and here are the ones for this prayer. I release feelings of fear. I give no power to thoughts of apprehension or worry. Regardless of appearance, I have faith in the power of God within to heal me on every level of my being. The guiding light of the Holy Spirit brightens my way. I allow true understanding to have dominion over feelings. And from the Psalms, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I want to wish you a wonderful week. A week filled with hope. A week filled with blessings. As you care and care for your care recipient. Let us remember always. Onward in love and caregiving. Namaste. God bless, and thank you so much for being with me. I look forward to seeing you next week when our very special guest will be Marcy Newman, the Heart Shift Coach. You are in for an incredible blessing. She's a dear friend. It was she who organized the, uh, the um, Global Day of Forgiveness that we all participated in just last week. So I look forward to taping the show with her and to being with all of you next Friday. Onward 
in love and caregiving.